My name is uh, Ron Muriera. My pronouns are he, his. Um, I'm a multidisciplined artist and uh, I have my own consulting firm working with arts and cultural organizations that fulfill their mission, RPM Consulting. Uh, I'm also board vice president of Californians for the Arts and co-founding core team member of San Jose Arts Advocates in San Jose, California. Pleasure to be here. Uh, I, I have a very, I'm, I'm blessed to have been um, involved in a very artistic and creative journey throughout my entire life. Um, I am currently involved in the realm of arts and cultural advocacy. I am the board vice president of Californians for the Arts and California Arts Advocates, uh, two statewide arts advocacy organizations that, uh, whose mission is to ensure that arts and culture are placed primary on the radar screens of elected officials and decision makers because California has not made the significant investment in arts and culture that it should, given the industry and the sector and the contributions that arts and culture make uh, to this huge state. So that's what I've been involved in um, for the last uh, several years. I'm also the co-founder of a local arts advocacy organization in San Jose called the San Jose Arts Advocates uh, with some great arts leaders as well. Uh, I continue my service volunteering on the boards of Red Ladder Theater Company, a 501c3 theater organization focused on social justice and equity, uh, utilizing the platform of theater arts as a way to transform lives. So very blessed to be on, on that board as well. And I'm also on the board of the Japanese American Museum of San Jose, telling the story of our Japanese American community and uh, specifically uh, the World War II uh, concentration camps. Uh, some people use internment, but uh, the word a lot of us would use is concentration because it was um, the concentration uh, camp term uh, similar to what was being used in, in Germany with um, our, our Jewish communities. So I serve in so many different capacities and feel very blessed to be involved in some sectors. Artistic journey um, started at age 10. I mentioned earlier, I'm a multidisciplined performing artist. Uh, I'm a musician. I play accordion and piano, as well as uh, percussions. Yes, a Filipino accordion player. Uh, I am also a dancer, trained in jazz and specifically Afro-Haitian and Afro-Cuban. Uh, and I'm also a comedian and an actor. So uh, being multidisciplined has given me an opportunity as a young person to find my voice, and to also express some of the experiences I've had. And I think this is one of the reasons I was invited and thank you so much because uh, as a youth, uh, I was impacted by racism and prejudice as an, at an early age being a uh, person of color and a young man of color during that time. And the arts is what basically inspired and saved me. Uh, if I did not have the arts, I think I would have taken a different road, one that would not have been as positive and impactful. So I give thanks every day for my arts and cultural mentors, my colleagues such as Usha and Sophia, uh, for their continued work, for they continue to inspire me. The young people continue to inspire me. And I, I continue this work through advocacy because I think much more of our decision makers have to realize how arts and culture is interwoven in all our lives. And that it is not a, a platform that is siloed arts over here, culture over here. But as, as Usha and her amazing organization, Mosaic America is trying to inform is that it is a part of every fabric of our culture and such should be embraced and invested in. So uh, it's, it's just a wonderful way. And that's why I also support work with the uh, younger generation. Uh, many of the younger uh, students that I've had the opportunity to work with uh, and I've also have educational equity in my background. Uh, I try to incorporate uh, the arts and cultural platforms as a way for them to find their voice because that, and I share with them my personal journey because that's how I was able to find confidence and inspiration and find my voice. So I think it, the work that Numu is doing is essential, especially your focus with art now and with young people because not only can young people tap into their talent, but find out that it is a way to express their feelings about what is going on around us. 
a large majority of my life in terms of my creative journey has been focused in theater. And uh, I was a member of the Asian American Theater Workshop, which became the Asian American Theater Company in San Francisco. I was raised most of my life in San Francisco. And it was my experience with the Asian American Theater Company in my early 20s, which helped solidify my mission in terms of using theater as the medium for educating people about significant histories and stories of our communities of color. As an example, uh, I was in a play um, that um, one of the first uh, productions that I was in at Asian American Theater Company, it was called Followers of the Season. And it was by a, a Filipino American playwright, Oscar Peñaranda, who's actually one of my mentors, which speaks to the story of the Filipino Americans who followed the seasons, who worked in the Alaskan canneries, who worked in the fields of the Leno, Central Valley picking asparagus. And so what they would do is the seasons would change. They would go up to Alaska and work in the canneries. Later on, they would be cutting asparagus in Central Valley. They would be picking strawberries and they would be picking grapes. And one of the most powerful, I guess, responses from that piece in which I played uh, several roles in was from a, a white audience member who came up to me later on and said, you know, I did not know about the history of racism against Filipinos in the 40s, the 50s, and 60s. And the fact that Filipinos were integral in the development of the farm workers labor movement, as well as the labor movement on the West Coast. So for me, it kind of validated that what I was doing in terms of uh, combining both my social justice work and my love of theater was on path. And I think as Usha had said, the arts, whether it's theater, dance, or music, um, is a way to grab you viscerally and have you understand, look, these are the experiences that are happening right now in our world. But it does it in a way that doesn't kind of hit you over the head like a, with a sledgehammer, but it, it, it provides this, this uh, framework where you're being immersed in this world on, on stage, whether it's a, a theater production or a dance production. And uh, for me, that's what draws me to live performance. And the reason also why I'm, I'm kind of sad about our current state, because the arts brings life and, and thoughtfulness to live audiences and to the performers on stage. And it's something that's missing right now. And that's why I think the arts is something that keeps our well-being very positive and keeps our entire fabric of why we are who we are uh, going. And so I think it plays a very essential role in a lot of the racial um, inequity, uh, you know, that's happening in terms of putting a lens on it and saying, look, this is happening. Matter of fact, a couple, a couple of my playwright friends are writing uh, some uh, plays in collaboration with African American actors, Asian American Pacific Islander uh, playwrights with, with African American Black playwrights working together to tell the stories of this is a movement that, yes, it's about the Black Lives Movement, but look at all our ally, our co-conspirators who are working with us because they believe in what has been happening to all our communities. And they're doing that through the platform of theater, which is very powerful. One of the things that I'm also been involved in with regards to arts advocacy is arts education. Uh, we're seeing not as much emphasis placed in our schools with regards to arts education. My wife, as an example, my wife is a lecturer at San Jose State University in the College of Humanities and the Arts, and she teaches arts integration into, core, into the core curriculum. So she has future teachers who she's sharing how essential the arts are in integrating into their curriculum. And they're not, you know, and, and for them, it's really hard because if they're a math teacher and the social studies teacher, they're like, how am I going to do that? And I, so I observe how she does this. And it's, and she's also, you know, she's a performing artist as well. And she's just also, a, you know, a person who I also admire and, and I'm inspired by as well. And, and so it's, it's important, again, for us to find those points of commonality. Uh, and that's why, you know, for me, uh, growing up, arts was essential. I didn't get arts in the school. Very few of the schools I went to had arts until high school. I had to get the arts, my arts education outside of the school, you know, through piano lessons, accordion lessons, dance lessons, being involved in theater. 
So I, I think it is really integral for many of the arts and cultural organizations, not just here in Santa Clara County, but throughout the state of California to find a way to increase access to arts education for all our students, you know, whether it's the public schools or, or I mean, there should be, of course, more, more privileged uh, areas are gonna have access to the arts, you know, whether it's like choir or band, uh, dance, uh, than some of the other uh, communities who don't, who lack resources. Um, so I, I think it's essential for arts to be offered uh, both in the community, but as well as during the school hours where, where students are for a large majority of their day. <laughs>